Okay, I'm in the aircraft. I'm gonna try to keep this low so I don't have the uh, background lighting blacking out the uh, avionics. Now, Garmin suggests, or I think they require eight gig SD cards. Um, and I have plenty of them, but they're getting harder to find. Uh, but working with some of the newer FX3 owners. And uh, I think a 16 gig works fine. And if you get larger, um, I think you can solve the problem for the geeks out there just by partitioning an 8 gig drive with the FAT32 on that 8 gig. And then, uh, so if you ever have a problem with the SD card not working, that would be an option. Now, some people um, will use the same SD card that's already in the uh, uh, device, but I don't do that. Uh, you've got all, your engine log, all, all kinds of G3X logs that are being recorded to this. So this is the original SD card, and I I, uh, I leave this only for data recording. So when I go to update, I remove this one, set it aside, and use the blue one. Uh, that I, I use a blue one for the G3X, and a black one for the GNC 355. So what I do is before powering on, I will put in the SD cards with the updates. Now this is just map updates, not, not firmware updates. Now I did read online um, where you can hot swap this SD card and the G3X will pick it up. Um, so I actually tried that last time because I actually had two different SD cards with updates because um, I had uh, created the uh, updates at a separate time. By the way, you get the updates from flygarmin.com. There is a subscription. Uh, mine cost, I think it's around 680 a year for the IFR and BFR package, United States only. Um, now as far as hot swapping, the GNC 355 did not like the card being hot swapped. It actually um, barked at me a failed SD card, load failure, or something to that effect. Now if you're just doing the Garmin G3X, you can use IBBS only if you have IBBS. Um, but if you're going to be updating a GNT 355, you need to have avionics on. So today I'm just going to use Master and Avionics. So I've got the map updates in prior to powering up. Both systems are going to identify that there's an update available and offer to update. Uh, the G3X, uh, uh, the one that has like the 8 gigs of, I can't remember what the map data is, but um, it could take 15 minutes. So that's why sometimes the external charge source is good to have. The GNC 355 will update or offer to update if the map's expired. If you're installing like a day or two prior to expiration, um, it's a little tricky. Um, you've got to press, I think, the databases button and then preload them. So a little, little uh, more complicated user interface on the GNC 355. 355 the G3X always just prompts you. So I'm gonna go master and avionics on so that the 355 can come up. And you'll see that they will prompt, uh, recognize that there's an update. Now, if you're doing a firmware update, you also wanna have your servos on, which is your autopilot, because the G3X is gonna update everything that's on the bus. All right, so here, I'm gonna go databases on the 355. Um, no recommended databases available. See, this is where you get the convoluted interface. So now I'm gonna select all. See, it's not effective until February 23rd, and today is the 22nd. So this is the thing where you get the uh, strange workflow, if you will, if you're trying to update before they're expired. 355 is very fast, so we're just gonna hit preload. The G3X, you know, it recognizes the update, hit update all. And it's going to go through its thing, and then when it's done, it's going to tell you to press back to restart. 355 is already done, so we're just going to hit continue. And today's updates were uh, pretty fast, as you can see. So I'm going to press back to finish and reboot. Now, I still have the other... I, I don't change the SD cards until it's powered off. So once this uh, uh, boots up, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down. I'm gonna put the original SD cards back in and then go on and fly and go on about my business. So it's, uh, that's the process for updating the map data from Fly Garmin.